assalamu alaikum in this video we will be talking about the acute kidney injury also called as the acute renal failure or ARF in acute kidney injury there is a sudden decrease in the kidney functioning due to the damage damage caused to the kidneys and uh, this results in the buildup of the waste materials inside our body the accepted criterion for the acute kidney injury is a uh, is an increase of 50% uh, or greater in the serum creatinine above baseline the normal serum creatinine level in our body is uh, less than 1 mg per deciliter there are actually three causes of uh, AKI and the first is the pre-renal cause it includes it includes all those causes which lead to the impaired blood flow uh, to the kidneys and leading to the hypoperfusion to the kidneys including hypovolumia hemorrhage anaphylactic shock cardiogenic shock and the dehydration the second is the intrarenal cause and uh, it includes all those causes which cause damage to the actual tissue of the kidneys and it includes the nephrotoxic drug poisoning acute glomerulonephrites acute pyelonephrites and myoglobinuria then are the postrenal causes these are the causes which obstruct the uh, flow of urine out of the uh, kidneys and include the bladder outlet obstruction bilateral ureter obstruction and the tumors the pathophysiology as we already mentioned the three types of the uh, causes of the acute kidney injury including the pre-renal causes intrarenal causes, and the postrenal causes the pre-renal cause lead to the glomerular hypoperfusion that is the less blood flows to the glomerulus and the post-renal cause lead to the hydronephrosis which means the uh, fluid starts to accumulate in the kidneys and all these causes including the intrarenal causes ultimately lead to the necrosis of glomerulus and uh, which impairs the excretory function of the kidneys and this leads to the retention of waste materials inside our body these waste materials are normally excreted out of the blood with the help of our kidneys but when the uh, function uh, functioning of the uh, kidneys is impaired these waste materials start to accumulate inside our body and also there is a retention of water and electrolytes and all this ultimately leads to the pulmonary edema hyperkalemia hypocalcemia oliguria and increased urea and creatinine in the blood classification the classification of acute kidney injury includes assessment of three grades of severity and two outcome levels of uh, classification and uh, the classification system of acute kidney injury is called the rifle system of classification and there are five stages in this classification in the first stage there is the risk there is a decreased gfr and the uh, gfr is decreased by or more than 25 percent in the injury stage the gfr is increased by or more than 50 percent and in the failure stage the gfr is decreased by or more than 75 percent and uh, the fourth stage that is the loss stage includes complete loss of kidney function for more than four weeks and in the last stage that is the end stage kidney disease there is the presence of end stage kidney disease for at least more than three months the patient suffering from acute kidney injury passes through four phases the first is the initiation phase which begins when the initial insult occurs to the kidneys and the last is when the second stage that is the oliguric stage starts in the oliguric stage the urine output decreases to approximately 400 ml which uh, uh, leads to the concentration of waste uh, materials inside the blood and the third stage is the diuresis stage in this stage uh, the gfr and the urine output uh, gradually start to increase and the laboratory values begin to stabilize and in the recovery stage the renal function returns to the normal and the laboratory values also return to the previous normal levels the diagnosis in the diagnosis first we have to obtain a complete history from the patient including the history of medications or the systemic illnesses because these can also be the causes of the acute kidney injury laboratory evaluations like the serum creatinine level blood urea nitrogen level 
these waste materials are excreted out of the blood with the help of kidneys and the levels of these waste materials gives us a clue about how well the uh, kidneys are functioning and lastly we can do the imaging studies like the usg uh, with the help of usg we can find out any obstruction in the path of the urine flow clinical manifestations whenever the uh, whenever there is a damage uh, to the kidneys uh, almost every system of the body is affected first the patient may appear critically ill and lethargic due to the uh, abnormally increased levels of the waste materials in the body the patient's skin and mucous membranes appear dry due to uh, dehydration and the patient may also suffer from drowsiness headache muscle twitching and seizures due to the abnormal uh, levels of electrolytes in the body the medical management of acute kidney injury is uh, focused at eliminating the cause and maintaining a fluid balance in the body and providing renal replacement therapy if needed if acute kidney injury is caused by the pre-renal cause the focus of the treatment is to improve the blood flow and the renal perfusion to the kidneys and in case of post renal cause the focus of the treatment is to remove the obstruction which impedes the flow of the urine and in the intra renal cause the causative agent which uh, leads to the damage of the kidneys is uh, uh, eliminated in case the excess of waste materials get accumulated in the body we can provide the patient with the hemodialysis in which the patient's bl uh, blood is uh, pumped to a dialyzer also called as a uh, artificial kidney and uh, this dialyzer uh, filters out the waste materials from the uh, bo uh, blood of the patient and returns the purified blood to the patient again and for the treatment of hyperkalemia we can use the cation exchange resins which enhance the excretion and uh, excretion of the uh, potassium from the body as in uh, uh, acute kidney injury the uh, energy requirements are increased tremendously we have to provide the patient with the high uh, carbohydrate diet and uh, uh, not to add uh, to the abnormality of the electrolyte levels in the patient we have to restrict the foods that are rich in potassium and phosphorus including bananas citrus fruits juices and coffee now the nursing management first we have to monitor the fluid and electrolyte balance of the patient because of the serious fluid and electrolyte imbalances that can occur with aki the nurse monitors the patient's serum electrolyte levels and physical indicators of those complications during all phases of the disorder reducing the metab metabolic rate the nurse takes the steps to reduce the metabolic rate bed rest may be indicated to reduce the exertion Promoting pulmonary function. Attention is given to pulmonary function and the patient is assisted to turn, cough and take deep breaths frequently to prevent atelectasis, that is the collapse of the lung and respiratory tract infections. Preventing infection. Maintenance of asepsis is very essential with invasive lines and catheters to minimize the risk of infections and increased metabolism. Providing the skin care. The skin may be dry or susceptible to breakdown due to the edema. Therefore, uh, a good skin care is uh, important. Providing the psychological support. Because of the debilitating illness, the patient and uh, his family may be, uh, may be uh, uh, undergoing uh, through, uh, through a phase of anxiety and the nurse provides the psychological support to alleviate that anxiety and to uh, improve the mental fun mental states of the patient thank you that was all about the acute kidney injury